Hey class, if you got this as one of your recommended videos for the unit six quiz, um, one of the questions you may have missed um, may be that you imported the, you click the icon, imported this, this data here in Excel, and then maybe tried to go ahead and calculate the scatter plot or the R, calculate the R or the R squared. Well, first of all, here you need to notice that the household incomes are not individual numbers, and you would not be able to get the scatter plot done or calculate the correlation coefficient when you don't have individual numbers. So read the problem carefully. It will tell you what numbers to use here instead. Like it might say less than 40,000 to use 35,000. And it might say to use midpoints in these other categories. So read the problem carefully because it might just very well mean that you missed the reading part that tells you how you have to recode these things to where you get individual values. So based on what it tells you to do, then you're going to need to come into Excel and create a new uh, household income column. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let's suppose the problem tells me less than 40,000 needs to be coded with 35,000. And I'll just redo that. And if it says midpoints, like between 40,000 and 50,000, I would use 45,000. That would be the midpoint. And similarly, between 50 and 60, I would use 55,000. 65,000, and then it might tell me that for more than 70,000 to use 75,000. So you have to follow the wording and the problem to get that. Those would be your new incomes. For your weekly TV hours, these are fine. They're, they're already individual numbers. So I'm just going to control copy on that and come over here and control V paste. So that the two columns that I really want to use now to get my scatter plot or my trend line or uh, calculate the R and the R squared, then I've got everything I need. And I think on this problem, um, to my recollection, I think they had just ha had you pick the correct scatter plot. So as a reminder to do the scatter plot, you will highlight your two columns of data and whatever column you have on the left side, that's gonna be the one that, it, that Excel treats as your X variable, your independent variable. There is a way to switch the X and the Y variables if you need to. There's a video, a live binder video on that, so you can watch that if you need to. But otherwise, I've already got my incomes on the left-hand side, and I'm just going to highlight my two columns of data, come up here to Insert, click Insert, come to the Chart section, and it's this one right here, scatter plot, and the first one. So I'm going to click on that. There's the scatter plot with income on the horizontal, and weekly TV hours on the vertical. All right, so if you just have to pick the correct scatter plot, you would look for the one that looks like this, that of course would have income down here on the x-axis and weekly TV hours. And do make sure that you check the axes to see if maybe, like if you cannot find this correct answer, you might need to switch the x and the y axis. I don't think you do on this one, but on some of the other questions, I know that you had to possibly switch the X and Y axis in order to find the correct answer. So just make sure you've watched all the live binder videos. So there would be your scatter plot. Another thing that would have been asked on the quiz that you might have missed related to these questions is calculating the R and the R squared. And, um, you know, you have to make sure you round to the appropriate number of places. Remember, you may have missed the question simply because of rounding. So to calculate the R, uh, I'm going to go up to any blank cell and type in equal sign first, capital C-O-R-R-E-L, open parentheses, and whatever's my X variable, I'm going to put in first, but I'm not going to include the label. So these incomes are my X variable. I'm clicking and dragging down those numbers, and then comma, and then do the same thing with my Y variables, or my Y values. Don't include the label. Click and drag, then close parentheses, press enter, and there would be my R value. And, you know, again, I don't remember exactly how many decimal places, but if it said 2, then you've got negative 0 0.958. Well, since there's an 8 there, you go around to negative 0 0.96 for your R value. Okay, and that's a strong negative. It's going to ask you that. There will be a little box that drop down that you click. Well, remember, the closer your number gets to either negative one or positive one, the stronger it's getting. So use the R guidelines 
in the unit five and six slides. Any value between 0.7 and one or negative 0.7 and negative one is strong. This is definitely strong and we can even tell that because of how tight the points are in a linear pattern on the scatter plot. And it's in a negative pattern. It's going downhill. And we say in general, as the incomes are getting higher or larger, the weekly TV hours are decreasing. So all of these are things that you might be asked to um, answer about the scatter plot, about the relationship. So there's calculating your R. There's characterizing it as a strong negative uh, relationship. Use the R guideline chart in the unit five and six slides for help with the, you know, determining whether it's weak, moderate, or strong. <clears throat> and remember, though, that correlation does not mean causation. Like we cannot say that incomes cause the TV hours to be what they are. There could be any number of reasons why we're seeing this relationship. It might be some underlying cause, which is usually the case. Um, <clears throat> so I think there's some part where, that you just want to realize that even though there is a um, negative association and that in general, as the incomes are increasing, the weekly TV hours are decreasing, we cannot say that incomes are causing the TV hours to be what they are. Um, other than that, if you are also getting this video, you may have missed, let's see, maybe you may have missed a trend line type of question where you're picking the choice of the uh, picture that shows the correct trend line and also asking you to calculate R and R squared and then interpreting R squared. So to show you that, once you've got the scatter plot, to get your trend line. Now, this is, of course, assuming you've got a fairly recent version of Excel. Otherwise, if you don't, you're going to probably have to Google. I think if you have an older version, there used to be uh, something up here that said layout. Like once you would get your scatter plot, there would be something up at the top that said layout. And you would have to click layout and then trend line or add trend line, something like that. But that's older versions. If you have a fairly newer version, then when you click your mouse on, on top of the chart, you get a plus sign. So to get the R and R squared, well, we've already got the R over here. To get the R squared and the trend line, you just click your chart, click on the plus sign, and come down here to trend line. And as soon as you hover on top of it, it should show the trend line. So I'm checking that. We've got the trend line. You should now be able to match that to the correct choice. All right. Then to get the R squared and the equation of the trend line, you have to come over here to trend line and click on the arrow and go down to more options. You should get this pop-up that you see over to the right and you just come down, make sure it's checked on linear, come down and check display equation on chart and display R squared so that I can now slide that up. Another way to get the R squared, though, is obviously to come over here to this R value and just square it on a calculator. Um, but Excel will do this for you, and you see both the equation and your R squared value. You need to know how to interpret the R squared because there will be a few questions like that that you may have missed. And we usually express R squared as a percentage. So if you look at the R squared of 0.9191, I would say that roughly, if I round it to two decimal places, and of course that depends on how many decimal places your MSL question asks for, but roughly it's a 92%. So what we say is, the, or this will it'll have the wording on the question, the best fit line accounts for about 92%, that's coming from your R squared, of the variation in blank, well, you need to make sure the blank is your Y value. And remember, the Y value here are the weekly TV hours. So the interpretation that you would want to click as the correct choice, or I think it's just putting the numbers in the boxes, is that the best fit line accounts for about 92% of the variation in weekly TV hours. And anytime you get close to that 100% level with your R squared, then that's a strong relationship, and it would basically mean that, you know, you your predictions would be valid. They would be accurate. And the predictions are not going to be valid because, like, some of the choices were things like because your line passes through most of the points. That's not the reason. In fact, your line does not even have to pass through any of the points. All it's got to really do is get close to the points. So, you know, your correct reason would be things like the um, – 
if 92% is explained, you know, 92% of the variation in the TV hours is being explained by income, then that's a very large percentage. That's why you would want to, you know, check that you're getting valid predictions is because the, you know, such a large percentage of variation is being explained. So, um, you know, make sure you put those kind of choices. And remember, it's the variation in the Y variable that's being explained. In this case, 92% of the variation in the weekly TV hours is being, ex being explained by this linear relationship. That's strong. So you would look for those types of choices. Other than that, I'm just kind of looking back through. And I think for the most part, you know, the, if you're seeing this video, I had picked out that you were missing questions about the calculation part, the R, the R squared, the trend line. Um, something else to think about because there definitely are several questions where you have to pick the correct picture, the correct choice of the trend line. So let me bring up paint and just show you all something about a trend line. With trend lines, they do not necessarily have to pass through points. Remember, I just mentioned that. But here's what is true about a trend line. So like if you had something like this, and maybe your trend line passes through like right here. What has to be true about a trend line is the vertical vertical like all the points above the trend line if you were to imagine all the vertical distances for points that were above the trend line so these were all points and then look at vertical distances of points below the total of the vertical distances for points above the line have to equal the total uh, distance of the all the points below. So like if you added up the vertical distances of all, the, all of these orange points above, the total of those orange distances would have to equal the total of the green distances. That's always got to be true about a trend line. So, you know, you obviously would not want to pick as a choice of the correct trend, trend line, you wouldn't want to pick something that has something like that as a choice because you can clearly tell here that the vertical distances from total of the vertical distances of points above the line is a much larger total distance than points below the trend line, if you get what I'm saying. That could not be the correct trend line because the vertical distances above do not equal the vertical distances below. Whereas on something like this looks more appropriate. It looks like that could possibly be true. So that's also a way of narrowing down your choices as to which graph is the correct trend line where you would not necessarily have to do it in Excel to tell that. Um, but totally up to you. I mean, if you need to use Excel to get the trend line like I showed earlier, uh, you know, using Excel to get it, that's fine. Um, or some of them, like I said, you might be able to pick out the correct trend, trend line without necessarily having to do it in Excel. But just know that Excel, the tool is there for you to get this trend line. Certainly on questions where you have to calculate the R and R squared, you would want to use Excel to do that, unless it's like some sort of multiple choice question. If it were a multiple choice question, I could clearly tell from, say, this picture that this would be a strong negative R. You know, if it, if it was choices, I would know not to pick a choice that was near zero or moderate. I would know to pick a strong one just because of how close these points are to the line. And I should also be able to tell that this is a negative association rather than a positive. Um, other than that, I hope that that will be helpful for whatever questions you may have missed related to, um, you know, this kind of stuff with the trend line and the R and R squared. And also, if you missed that household income part because you needed to remember to change them to individual values. So hopefully that'll be helpful for you.